In this chapter, we will talk about authorizations. When you make API calls, it's very likely that the endpoint requires you to authenticate and authorize. There are multiple methods available to authorize. One of them will be OAuth. And that's what we'll use today in the example. We are going to use the Cyrock identity environment, and create an OAuth app, and client credentials, and set up an authorization in flows so that we can call so that we can use APIs against the Cyberhawk identity tenant. What I like to do is to query my Cyberhawk identity tenant to see what users are existing. Therefore, I will go to the Cyberhawk connectors and locate the endpoint that I'd like to call. You will find this under C directory services and the get users API call. Drag and drop it in interface. And as you can see, we require some authorization. You can see the log there, and the log is saying that it requires authorization before we can run this. We also need to make sure that the connector settings are correct, that we are calling the right tenant. We can simply copy and paste the path from the tenant into the host. You do not need the HTTPS because that will be added automatically. Next thing that we need to do is to set up an authorization. We don't have anything any yet. Let's go to settings, find authorizations, and create a new one. Let's give it a name. Cyberhawk Identity Tenant. And let's select the type of authorization we'd like to do. We'd like to go with OAuth 2 and client credentials. Make sure that you set the content type to applications XW form and URL encoded. Now, of course, we need a client ID, we need a client secret, and we need to know where to get the token. To do so, we have to go back to the identity tenant to the admin portal, and let's start with creating a user. Click on the users, add user, and give it a login name. Let's call it API user. Let's select password never expires, is an OAuth confidential client, and it's a service user. Now set the password. This password will be the client secret. So later on in the OAuth authorization that we'll build, we have to use the API user and the password that we are setting here. The one will be the client identity or the client ID, and the other one will be the client secret. Create a user. Now we also have to make sure that this user is part of the administrator's group. By the way, you will not find the user under the normal user, but under the service users. Let's go to roles and find the system administrator group. Go to members, click on the add button and search for the API user. Add it and save. Now we need to set up a web client, an OAuth client. To do so, you have to go to the web apps Click on the Add Web Apps button on the right hand side. Go to the Custom tab and select the OAuth 2 client. Click Yes and Close. Now let's configure this client. Let's give it a name, an application ID. Tenant API. Leave everything as is, go to general usage, so make sure that it's confidential, must be an OAuth client. Let's click on the tokens. We're going to use a JOT token and you're going to use client credentials.
We also have to define a scope. A scope is the endpoints that you can call. Let's call it all and add a dot star to the rest rejects. This means that any endpoint can be called. On the permissions, we have to add the user that we have just created. So search for the API user. Edit, make sure that it has the run and deploy automatically. Select it. And now let's save this app. The status will go to deployed. So now we have an OR2 client defined and we have client credentials. Let's go back for identity flows. The client ID will be the API user at, in my case, flowstutorial.com. And the client secret will be the password related to that user that we've created. Now we also have to fill in the token URL. That's the place where we have to look for to get the token. That will start with my tenant name. Slash. Go out to slash token slash and now I have to provide the name that I gave to my web application. Remember that I gave it the name tenant API. Okay, all of this should be okay now. We have the client credentials, we have the right content type. Now we also have to add the scope. We define a scope which we name all. And now let's give it a try. Let's try to authorize. Authorized successfully. And let's save it. So now we'll have an authorization available for our Cyborg identity tenant, which we will use for the API call that we're noting that we're going to do. Select the authorizations, select the one that we've just created. And now let's run the flow and see what the result will be. Notice the icon has now changed to a green lock or key rather than a black lock. The flow is running. Completed running. Let's take a look at the flow results. Click on the endpoint. Drill down to the received response body. Result. Results. And we can see there an array with four objects. And if we take a look at the third one, then you can find the cloud admin with all the details, the mail, the name set, the UID, etc. Also, the last user that we've just created, the API user, will be in available. Okay, so we have now successfully set up an authorization towards Cyberhack Identity, and we managed to run an API call that returned all the users in the cloud directory.